Hi and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn going solo this uh, fine summer evening. Um, kind of a last minute decision to go and do this show. Uh, have this beer sitting around. Um, Margaret's in Betty by, so I have to be a little bit quiet. I can't be screaming. Um, yeah. So um, anyway, uh, just felt like doing a show. I was actually doing some work, putting up a different episode and uh, just kind of felt like having a beer and figured why not, uh, you know, record it and share it with everybody. Um, really fun uh, beer that I want to get to in just a moment. But before that, I wanted to mention um, that I had not forgotten about that little off-handed uh, comment I made about a contest Mark and I made during the Firestone Walker episode um, where we were being really kind of goofy and just doing a lot of self-referential shit uh, stuff I should say and you can tell it's late and um, and just kind of you know we, I think we we're calling it how many you know inside jokes could we possibly do and let us know what you thought or let us know how many of the the references you picked up on so we did pick a winner, that is Alan H. So congratulations to Alan. Uh, I've already been in contact with Alan and I got his um, address and I'm gonna send him some, some beers. So uh, some nice fun stuff that I think he'll enjoy. So thanks Alan. He got I think four, four of the references out of probably like 50. Um, so there you go, congrats to Alan. Uh, thanks so much for uh, Playing that little game. Um, okay, so moving forward to the task at hand, which is um, uh, a, a new beer that just was released by New Belgium. And this beer is a, a collaboration, and I really enjoy collaborations. They're very popular right now in the craft beer scene. And I think, um, you know, uh, there's a couple different types of, of categories that I could generally group um, these collaborations into. Um, there's the guys who are just always doing collaborations, you know, like uh, Mikel or someone like that, who's just always collaborating with someone, really, be uh, in part because they don't have their own equipment. Um, and then there's, you know, the, the kind of battle of the powerhouses, or not the battle, but, you know, when two big breweries unite, um, that's always kind of neat. Uh, Brux is one that just come out recently now between Sierra Nevada and Russian River, two kind of big um, uh, uh, breweries. And then another type that is really kind of interesting is when kind of a big guy uh, teams up with with a smaller uh, brewery and that's what was happening here with the um, uh, Super India Pale Ale. Uh, it's a collaboration between New Belgium and uh, Alpine Brewing Company out of uh, uh, well, the kind of western suburbs of uh, San Diego. It's called Alpine California about a half hour outside um, uh, San Diego and they're a very small brewery. They have a very very limited distribution and their beers are highly acclaimed uh, especially their hoppy beers and uh, I myself have only had Alpine beers a handful of times and and I have family in San Diego I get out there pretty often uh, even out there. It's not all over the place. Believe me um, it, It's hard. It's it's one of those kind of trading beers beers that, that people really have to kind of a uh, wheel and deal to get a, their hands on and uh, when I have had Alpine beers I've really really liked them and it's cool that um, New Belgium uh, kind of gave them a platform for more or less national distribution here and uh, they almost say as much uh, right on their bottle uh, it's called a super superhero uh, India Pale Ale and, and one of the things it says is consider yourself a hero for getting an Alpine beer out, uh, outside of San Diego so uh, you know and it, it's true it, it's nice um, like I was saying with with certain types of uh, collaborations when a big guy and a little guy get together you know you're you're opening up such a wider audience for that um, smaller brewer so it's really kind of cool I was reading a little bit about this beer it's obviously a super India pale ale it's a double IPA coming in at nine percent and it sounds like they really gave the guys at Alpine a lot of control here, uh, especially in recipe development. Obviously, the New Belgian people had to help them kind of amp up the recipe for a larger scale. Um, something just absolutely insane. They said they brewed more in 20 hours at New Belgium than Alpine would all year. And that in just the dry hopping, I think this was a triple uh, dry hopped, you know, so they do triple hopping for, for Miller Lite. Well, this is just triple dry hopped. Uh, they used two tons of hops 
I, I think. I mean, that sounds almost impossible. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's what I said. Two tons of hops for the dry hop. Um, you know, j just f f for a scale, you know, when somebody does like a homebrew batch or something like that, if you put, you know, three or four ounces, let's say six ounces, you go six ounces of dry hop in, in your, your homebrew, that's like considered, whoa, what are you doing? Why are you putting so much hops in there on your dry hop? So two tons, just unbelievable. Um, so kind of cool, I only have one glass here. I have my new Belgium um, branded glass because I am gonna be drinking this beer afterwards. And unlike often uh, when, when on, the sh on the show when new beers come out, I try not to, uh, specifically not to drink them before the show. This beer um, I saw, I was out at a bar. I was at um, a bar here called the Fountainhead in Chicago. They were doing a benefit for um, victims of the um, Colorado wildfires. And they had a lot of Colorado uh, beers on, uh, one being New Belgium. And I saw this, I was like, whoa, Alpine. And I didn't even know they bottled it at the time. And uh, I got it. And I liked it. I like this beer. I'm just going to tell you, at least on draft. So, uh, you know, not going to do my little tasting pour. I'm just going to give it a big, uh, a big hefty pour here. Um, and I can tell you the moment I opened this up, uh, I could smell the hops. Uh, I kind of, kind of stammered a little bit uh, just because <laughs> there was just a, so much hop aroma. The moment you open this up, uh, I'm going to be looking forward to having this this beer. Um, so like I said before, this is a 9% India Pale Ale. Um, the beers that Alpine is really known for are these big hoppy beers. Um, Pursuit of hoppiness um, and exponential hoppiness are their, are their double and triple uh, pale, um, India Pale Ale is very much in the West Coast style. So that's that drier style of beer. Um, you know, for, for the double IPA, you're looking at probably seven to 8%. And, um, you know, very, very hop forward, um, not a lot of malt backing for it. And then they have another one, uh, it's a rye IPA called Nelson, and they use uh, a Nelson Sauvin hop, uh, which is native to New Zealand. And it has a really wonderful grapey, um, flavor to it and i'm telling you the alpine nelson is a beer to seek out it is unbelievably good uh, i was at a beer tasting where we were just sampling ipa after ipa and the alpine nelson stood out um even in that crowd um you know sorry to to get your hopes up uh, and not have that beer but you know we have the next best thing which is the uh what is it called again super India Pale Ale, um, so very cool. Um, as you can see here, uh, let me just get some of this condensation off here so I can actually see the beer. Um, really nice and clear, um, you know, it, it, I would guess it's not really filtered, but it might be kind of, um, they might have some sort of centrifuge to help uh, clear out some of the hop uh, matter. Uh, it looks pretty darn clear. Um, really nice uh, orange, like golden orange, um, a really bright color, and a big white fluffy head. I mean, that's what you want a beer to, to look like. I know that a lot of times I pour these little tasters um, because I'm doing multiple beers, but uh, you know, it, it's really nice to have a nice solid, you know, what do they say, two fingers of head? So there you go. Man, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of hops in there. There are a lot of hops. Um, so obviously what I'm predominantly getting is hops. Uh, I do get a little sweet malt backing, um, a little bit of kind of um, like a candied orange in there. Um, kind of a nice toffee, um, not toffee, but uh, just a little bit of kind of like a sweet breadiness to it. Um, and it goes very well with just a wide variety of hops that I'm getting in here. Um, the first thing I get is a really kind of explosive green herbal pine. Um, not kind of like a Christmas tree pine, but, but something brighter, almost like, um, 
um, like uh, like juniper. If you ever smell like a fresh juniper branch, it's very piney, but also really kind of bright and lively. Um, so like a little bit of juniper in there, um, a, a woody, herbaceous, dank, um, undertones of tropical fruits. Um, not quite to, uh, I'd say more kind of like, um, orange and grapefruit, uh, not really into, so citrus fruit rather than tropical fruit. Um, earthy and woody as well. And uh, definitely some characteristic of um, Amarillo. So a tiny bit catty, if you will, um, but really a nice, lovely, um, bright pine is, is what I would say is the main component here. Um, also, uh, you know, that, that orange uh, really goes well with the, the, and the hops goes well with the, with the malt here. Um, and it tastes like it's gonna be sweet, so we'll say. Wow. Wow. Man. I mean, I know I've had this beer before, but I was kind of having it uh, in a night worth having several beers, and I wasn't really kind of sitting and analyzing it. Um, incredibly hoppy. I mean, really, really hoppy. Uh, it, it's like if there was such thing as an orange pine tree, that's what this would be. So you've got this really lush orange character, um, maybe um, even like a golden grape grapefruit, like a ruby grapefruit, a really, really sweet one. Um, and uh, a little bit of that kind of, you, you peel it off and it's still got some of that white stuff on the outside, the pith, uh, that's a little bitter. It's still got some of that. And you've also got, you know, picture that hanging on like a big furry, like Douglas fir or something. And you're just kind of eating that and smelling the pine. Um, that's pretty much what this is with a really lovely um, undertone. Uh, it's got not a ton of malt, but it does have some sweetness to it, which is obviously coming from the malt. Um, you can feel the hops in your mouth. Um, you can just feel it kind of like the, the hop resin just sitting on your, on your teeth and coating them. Mm. Yeah. Um, woody as well, but I, I just can't, I, I think the best way to describe it is like, a pine tree that's starting to grow grapefruit or yeah grapefruit I'll go with um, it's also really creamy and smooth um, for an IPA um, deadly drinkable for nine percent I mean I just took two nice kind of hefty sips here I'm not getting any alcohol warmth or anything like that. Um, there is bitterness here, but uh, that sweetness is really taming it, so it makes it drinkable. It's not so bitter that, um, you know, it's hard to take in kind of bigger uh, gulps. Um, really, really interesting beer. And the nose on it is just phenomenal. Uh, I love kind of good um, smelling beers, and, and this certainly is one of them. Um, the beer is incredibly fresh. Uh, I, I didn't even check it for uh, for a date, um, and I don't know. I, I didn't really look and see how they date their their big bottles at um, New Belgium. But I mean, this beer has been on the market for maybe a week. Um, and it's probably the same case for you guys. I highly recommend it. This is definitely a recommended beer for anybody who is a hop lover. Um, uh, you know, I'm gonna go um, 95 for this beer. I mean, this is what I want uh, a, a, a double IPA to be. Um, it, it is like a West Coast IPA, but to me, it has a little bit of that kind of Midwest kind of undertone of sweetness to it. Um, reminds me a little bit of kind of um, like a hop slam type thing uh, with that, that sweet, or maybe like an Arctic Panzer Wolf from uh, Three Floyds. But man, uh, a little bit of like juicy fruit bubble gum as well. Um, really kind of lush, sticky um, uh, flavors in there. 
Um, wow, well, I like it. Uh, I don't know if I already said the rating. I've forgotten. It's late. Uh, 95, I'm going to go with the uh, the Super IPA from New Belgium and Alpine. Guys, uh, I, I think it was only something like five or six bucks for a bomber. Uh, go out and get this beer. Uh, definitely, I think you will enjoy it. Um, and after you do, let me know what you think. Um, you know, say... You know, you don't have to just, uh, you know, uh, comment on the show that's that's current. Drink it and and let me know. Um, that's about it. Uh, thanks so much, guys, for, for watching, as always. I uh, have a lot of interesting, fun news, knock on wood, uh, to share with you guys when the time is right. I am very excited about. Um, but until that time, and that time will come, um, uh, thanks for watching so much. Uh, I always enjoy doing these little kind of impromptu shows and, uh, hopefully you liked it too. I'm kind of bastardized my, my ending already, but I'll, I'll repeat myself. Thanks for watching guys. Right now I've got some excellent Alpine and New Belgium collaboration beer to drink and hopefully you do too.